Dragon's Dogma 2. All right. Dragon's Dogma is a very beloved franchise to a lot of people. And that's when Dragon's Dogma 2, when it launched, most reviews were mostly negative. One of the things here just really st stood out to me. It's by Big Chunk Reviews. I'm gonna keep it short. De Nuvo, bad optimization, microtransactions, do not buy. And we see people like freaking Charlie, Moist Critical. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a game I was extremely excited to play. Unfortunately, the PC port for Dragon's Dogma 2 is unplayable for me. And I mean that in the truest sense of the word. It crashed, I think, close to 20-something times. It shouldn't even be allowed to be sold in the state that it's in on PC. And now Charlie is standing on business. No, he's not gonna get Dragon's Dogma 2 until they get it into a good working state on PC, which is pretty cool of him to do, but he shouldn't have to do it. And that's why I wanna look at this today. I wanna look at how does Dragon's Dogma 2 run on PC? And should any game be releasing in the state that this one is? We got all these graphics cards behind me, so a ton of different systems we're gonna test just to see if you could actually run the game or not. Is it as bad as people are saying it is? Does the game even justify the way it looks? I tested everything from cheap NVIDIA graphics cards, cheap AMD graphics cards. As you go up the pricing stack, I tested those cards as well. Intel graphics cards, different kinds of CPUs. And I also tested a Steam Deck. Oh, scale sharpen. Oh, let's, let's sharpen it. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll look good. Oh, guys, it looks so much sharper now. Let's jump in. So let's go down to the system requirements here. They're asking for a pretty old processor, an i5 from 2018, I think, that these processors came out. These were like mid-range processors then. 16 gigabytes of RAM on your system. And then the graphics cards, the, the big part, the minimum requirement is a GTX 1070 or an AMD Radeon 5500 XT that you'll be able to achieve 1080p 30 FPS and you're not going to be doing any ray tracing because this game does support ray tracing. That's one of the reasons why it probably runs very poorly. And on our recommended side, so what they want you to be running is actually a processor from around the same time. So just a little beefed up one, but they're asking for an NVIDIA RTX 2080 or an AMD Radeon 6700. Estimated performance is 30 FPS at 4K. The first graphics card I'm going to start out with is the RTX 3060. I'm actually borrowing this from a friend right now, so I have access to it. But you can see that this is the most popular graphics card in the world, according to the Steam hardware survey. So this might be really applicable to many of you guys. So let's just jump into the game. And we're on the RTX 3060, as you can see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, is there's only a low and a high preset, which is odd, I would say. But there's also this here. That is ray tracing. This game does include ray tracing, but it's not like ray tracing reflections. You're not going to see all these shiny surfaces and stuff. What it does is it's actually using ray tracing for global illumination. But just know that it does decrease your performance if you turn on ray tracing, but it does make the game look better. Well, let's start with it off because when I initially launched the game, honestly put me on to graphic settings on low and it didn't have any DLSS or FSR 3. And I especially want you to pay attention to this setting image quality. The game is rendering a lie for you right now. So initially, when you jump in here, you can clearly see that low settings in this game does not look good. Do you see how flickery the trees look? We're at 1080p here on low. Shadow resolution, I think that's what's causing this, and it's making everything flicker all over the place. It looks really really bad. So you can play this on RTX 3060. And it is to mention that I'm running this with the fastest gaming CPU in the world, the RX 7800 XT. Now we are going to take a quick look at CPU performance later on in this video too, because th it's been known that this game is very CPU limited at times. And honestly, it could be more demanding on your CPU than your GPU. Clearly you're going to want all that distracting shadow stuff gone. So the most obvious thing that I, I would probably say is, well, let's try to up the shadows in the game. Two settings for shadows. There's shadow quality. Let's turn that up to high. And let's turn on shadow cache. So that's also already on. Now we hop back in game. You can see that a lot of that flickeriness that went with the shadows because we turned the shadows up to high, that they're mostly gone. What's interesting too is our FPS didn't really change a whole lot. I think we're at the high 70s before and we went down like three FPS by turning shadows up. What happens if you want to up your, your resolution? I'd say that'd be the big thing because eh, <clears throat> at least on my monitor here, Looking at 1080p doesn't exactly look the best on the RTX 3060. So let's get up it to 1440p, and we're going to get a much sharper image. 
we're also going to be asking more from, from the game. But what we can see is our FPS didn't actually change that much by jumping up to 1440p. And it really should. We shouldn't drop like 10, 15 FPS because we went to another resolution. It should be a lot more than that. What's an odd thing about this game is when you go here and you change your resolution, it will turn on image quality. And if you look in the thing right above my head, it says it changes the resolution of the scaling factor. So I think it's running the game at reduced render scale when you change the resolution, which is really weird. So I'm going to turn that back up and you're going to see that our FPS hit is going to be a lot worse by going to 1440p. Now, before we we're at 1080p, we're at like mid 70 FPS and now we're at mid 40s at 1440p. And you can also see that the image looks a lot sharper. Nice about this game though, is you do have access to DLSS super resolution if you want to upscale your game and play at a higher resolution. And we can just turn on DLSS super resolution onto quality and you're not really going to see that much of a hit to the image quality, but we're going to see quite a bit more FPS. We went from the mid 40s to over 60 here, and the game is so much smoother. This is a really good experience, honestly. This game is an RE engine game, so the same engine that Resident Evil 4 Remake is on, Resident Evil Village, or Street Fighter 6, all those type of games by Capcom. And we can do a little bit of combat here. Something I really like about the... Uh, quality in this game is like the effects are great like the blood splatters and stuff they look awesome i think they, they they feel great and they feel impactful when you do them oh god i got kind of bodied there but yeah the game itself looks pretty good you can see that there's this deer that's doing things so right you can see here that we're getting about 60 fps and what they added with this game is the option to use ray tracing in it so here's ray tracing you can't turn it on when you're already in the game so let's hop out of the game and just turn it on and jump back in to see kind of the effects we can do upping it to uh, ray tracing with global illumination stuff we only lost like about like up to five fps or so and the game supposedly does look better i don't have actual side by sides on it but ray tracing global illumination should basically give you more realistic colors as you walk around the world what global illumination will do is reflect the colors of the objects that are in in the area so we'll use ray tracing to say like the grass is green here crazy right it'll reflect the green into the area and that's why it kind of looks green around here and that kind of stuff and different areas of the game let's we'll see if like the uh fire here that from the effects will jeez they're chucking them <laughs> yeah <laughs> Rah. like that looks really good like this game definitely has its moments like oh it looks cool I guess we could also try just turning up the other settings in the game to um, basically max and see what happens on the RTX 3060 here at 1440p. Like screen space reflections, let's turn that on. Mesh quality, let's turn it up to, to high. Let's turn up texture filtering to X4. Um, and then let's turn up grass trees, resource intense effects quality, and all that kind of stuff. We just turned up all the settings in the game. How does the RTX 3060 run? at 1440p here. This is it literally on max and we're getting about 60 FPS. I honestly don't think this performance is bad at all. If you do want to squeeze a little bit more performance out of it, I mean, I wouldn't exactly recommend this. Could, you could decrease DLSS a little bit down to balanced and get a little bit more performance, but be sacrificing a little bit on the scaling quality of the game. And uh, you can see that we can get like about five more FPS here, which is like 10% more than we were getting. So let's see what like what a $200 GPU could stack up in this game. So can I get him? All right, let's do that. Okay, we're on the RX 6600 right now. This is only a 200 or $180 graphics card or so. So first off, we're not going to be asking for 1440p out of this card. It's saying some the, the VRAM is going to be a little tight here. All right, so this card only has 8 gigabytes. We're going to see if that's a problem. It's going to be a little fourth wall breaking, but my clips are going to be a lot of sync because I'm just outside the city now, but obviously I was on the 3060 and I wasn't even near the city yet. But I have to do these kind of out of order because this is an AMD graphics card and I have to uninstall drivers and stuff. So I kind of mix and match if you want a little fourth wall break. But you can see here at low settings 1080p, 
we're getting just barely 60, which isn't exactly great. I was hoping to be getting a little bit more than 60 because you don't really want to be upscaling at 1080p and we can't do anything else in terms of graphics. So like this is as low as it goes. That's kind of a shame. And then when you're on low settings, you end up with that weird shadow thing. That looks looks awful. That's really distracting. I'm not going to lie. So what happens if we try to fix the shadows a little bit? Obviously, we're not ray tracing or anything. Maybe we get up them to high. Our FPS dropped by about two. One or uh, it's kind of variable. The shadows look a lot better, though. If you can play Shadows on High, it doesn't seem like it affects FPS a whole lot. What would you need to do in order to achieve 60? Well, we can turn on FSR 3. Oh, this isn't even at 1080p. Wait, what? What is happening? What? It's not letting me turn on FSR 3 upscaling. I can't turn on FSR, which is compatible, an upscaler that's compatible with all brands of GPUs because it thinks I'm still on an NVIDIA one with DLSS. Let me restart the game and see if that'll fix it. That, if that's the case, that is... Okay, we're back in game. Let's see what happens if we adjust this. So system, are you serious? Okay, let's try something even weird. Let's see what happens if we get up to 1440p. It still doesn't, oh my God, dude. This is terrible, what the? The only thing I can think of doing is going into the Dragon's Dogma 2. Is there? Config, config, config. Here, 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 here. Frame rate. Here, here's all the settings. You see this? So if you do have a problem, this is how you have to fix it. This is so stupid. This is so stupid, dude. Off. I know that is kind of a niche situation. Most people wouldn't be taking out an NVIDIA graphics card running DLSS and putting in an AMD card, but I've never had that issue happen before. Ever. Okay, it says DLSS is off and we can turn on FSR 3 now. Oh my god. This is a... This is a mess oh god is it worse than this was image quality not turned all the way up was it not even running at native it wasn't even running at native holy sh dude the 6600 can only get 30 fps at 1080p low low all i did was up the shadows a little bit oh my what the f we're not even in combat let's turn on fsr3 on quality at 1080p, whoa, just with the shadows turned up a bit. Man, it looks soft. I don't care, leave me alone. This is insane. The car can't even run 1080p low at 60. No wonder the consoles are struggling. The consoles aren't even that much faster than a 6600. Dude, I can't even imagine what it's gonna be in the city. You can see that just standing here, we're just getting, we're just getting spikes. And this is probably a VRAM related problem on the 6600 here because it's eight gigabytes. I don't even know how you'd improve it. Um, all we could really do is turn down textures in the game. What are you pointing at? What are you pointing at? What are you doing? Let's try an Intel GPU now. As you can see in the, the upper left, I've got the Arc A750, the Intel Arc graphics card in here. They just uh, updated the drivers for it, right? Let's start off at low settings okay and let's make sure that we're at full resolution scale uh the resolution to 1080p so i'm kind of chilling here oh i will say the arc driver update seems like it's pretty good like the frame times are pretty stable obviously just by the nature of this game probably still going to be a little juddery but this is impressive this is impressive intel arc okay now, from experience, Intel's GPUs do do quite well in terms of um, other RE engine games like Resident Evil um, and stuff like that. Generally speaking, Arc usually does well in those games, so I think they've they've made some improvements already for it. Uh, well, first of all, there's the classic issue here: is like, oh, you can play the game like this. Um, I don't see any obvious things right now, but like. The shadows are extremely, extremely distracting whenever you come across them. About 55, 56 FPS here. Turn up the shadows again. So we're at about 56 before, and now we're at about 53. And the shadows look so much better. So you really don't lose that much turning up shadows and is ev worth every single frame here. Now you can see that we are pushing right up against that VRAM. It's allocating like 7.5 and it's using like seven gigabytes and we only have eight. So I would recommend if you have a 
more than eight gigabyte graphics card. It was the same thing with the RX uh, 6600. Let's go ahead and turn on some FSR quality. We don't have XCSS in this game, Intel's upscaler, but we do have AMD's upscaler, which works on Intel too. And we went from 46 to like 56. So we gained like 10 FPS or that's like a 25% performance gain. That's not that crazy. It looks really blurry now though. <laughs> I guess there's the other side of this um, because it seems like to me, it kind of plays you here. The image quality slider, it always defaults it to the middle when you select a preset in the game. But I can clearly see that that is not native resolution. Like it looks like a spatial upscaler. But if you do leave it like that, you would be getting close to 60 FPS in this game. I just kind of think that they're they're tricking you. And you can also see that it's definitely a spatial upscaler because you just see the ghosting. Do you see the ghosting? Oh my God, that is terrible. Holy shit. It is going around the character. I'm literally a ghost. That is a figment of my imagination around my character. That's insane. I'm very impressed with how Intel does. It, this isn't impressive from the game. I think the game just is either very poorly optimized or just is extremely demanding. And I don't know why they made a game that's so demanding. But Intel's... The GPU is running just fine, dude. Like the frame times are good. It's a smooth experience. Um, it's getting about the performance I would expect. It's around the level of a 6600. Let's move on to a more powerful graphics card. <laughs> okay, we now have the RTX 4070 in the system. This is about a 500 to $550 graphics card right now. So a big step up from the 3060 NVIDIA card that we saw just a little bit ago. Now, first off, if you're on a card that costs $500, I'm, I'm honestly guessing that you're probably going to be playing at 1440p. And what I just did is just maxed out the game. Ray tracing is on. I didn't have it on, but now it's on. <laughs> Everything else is, is on. Let's turn mesh quality to high. Let's uh, turn textures all the way up. If I hide my camera, you can see that's asking for almost eight gigabytes of memory on VRAM. It has 12 gigabytes, so we're perfectly fine there. And then let's turn on grass quality all the way up to high and all that kind of stuff. Everything is just maxed out in the game. This is gonna be similar performance to what an RTX 3080 would be getting. Okay, you can see at basically max settings at 1440p, the 4070 is getting about 60 FPS or so, which is pretty demanding. Like it's just barely scrounging by a brand new mid-range GPU or mid-range, whatever NVIDIA is wanting to call it, is getting just barely 60 FPS. That is a lot more performance than what the RTX 3060 was getting. The 3060 was what, in like the 30s to mid 40s at these settings. So we're fighting a boss. Oh, okay. Well, let's do the 4070 in combat at max settings here and see how this performs. Um, What are you doing? You're smacking. Bro's almost dead already. Okay, I'm just cutting his ankles. It's working. <laughs> Why am I throwing him? Go get him, buddy. <laughs> what the hell? Why did I throw my homie? I was trying to grab grab the, the guy's leg. Because you can, like, climb. Oh, he's going to squish me. Oh, my God. I'm stabbing the shit out of him. You can see in combat, the FPS does drop here too. We're at like 50 FPS or so. You have my gratitude, sir. But you might be um, like, oh, I'm getting a 4070. I don't blame me if you want some more performance out of this. Yes, we are running ray tracing and everything in this game and that. So you could turn on DLSS super resolution onto quality. It still gives really nice image quality at 1440p, even though we're upscaling from like 1080p. And you can see that we went from like 50 FPS and we're getting to around the mid 70s now. So. It's a lot better. So the 4070, it could definitely put up some good numbers in this game. I wouldn't be too afraid of that kind of performance. Again, it might be the CPU thing that is going to be limiting it. But let's hop on an AMD GPU that's about the same, you know, relative power as this NVIDIA one and see how that deals with the ray tracing and stuff that can be in the game because AMD GPUs aren't as strong at ray tracing as you might know. <sighs> it's so dark now. How do you keep the game light? How do you... Oh, shit. But I really wanted to see what happens if we turn on ray tracing. Right here, we're getting about 65 FPS. So I'm going to go ahead and back out to the main menu. And then let's turn on ray tracing. Then this will actually be max settings. That's a pretty, pretty big hit to performance there. So I will say the game does look very different with ray tracing. Like it looks brighter on the back of his head here. You could turn on FSR 3 and turn it on quality 
I mean, I guess 70 FPS. I mean, uh, or low 60s. I don't know. It's inconsistent, but that's okay FPS for turning on ray tracing and a little bit of FSR. Like, this is a game that's current to this card's generation. Is it just that demanding, or is there a lot of work the devs could do? That's a question. Well, let's move on to a more powerful AMD graphics card and see what the heck happens. We're on the RX 7900 XT now, and I'm just gonna leave everything on max like it was on the 7800 XT, because this will be able to do it. So let's just see what kind of frame rates we're able to achieve. Remember guys, this is a $700 graphics card. At one point in time, it was a $900 graphics card, but it's not like that anymore. Max settings at 1440p, and we're getting about 80 FPS. Something I did want to check, because do you see this, like, grass here? Do you see kind of, like, it's, like, crawling as I'm moving the camera? Uh, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. At least it looks like grass, but it doesn't look good. I was kind of curious. They have different forms of anti-aliasing in the game. I was curious if we change it to, like, FXAA and TAA. Let's try that. No, it still looks the same. I don't get the point of combining two anti-aliasers. Let's go ahead and turn on FSR quality and see what happens. 95 FPS, 99. That, that's a good improvement. I mean, this is what I would probably play the game on because when you get into combat, let's see if we can maybe find some combat that the FPS is going to take a dip. Yes, here's some combat here. Damn, you see that slam? Yeah, underneath all the performance issue that this, this game can have, there's a fun game. Like, look how satisfying the combat is. And it does, like, the game looks pretty good. Does it justify all of the performance it takes? All right, we're on the RTX 4070 Ti Super, which is an $800 graphics card. All right, so pretty expensive card at max settings, 1440p native in the mid 70s FPS. But when you're in combat sometimes, and I'll show some some gameplay of me on that too, it can it can drop a little bit, but it won't always be that bad. So if you do want to look at a little bit more performance of the 4070 Ti Super, you can again, always turn on DLSS super resolution, turn it to quality at 1440p, it still looks quite good. And now you can jump up from the 70s to actually around 100. Really, really good FPS in this game. But if you want to see bad FPS, remember I was talking about CPU limits so much before in this video. Yeah, it's very real. So this is the capital city, probably one of the most CPU demanding parts of the game. That's because there's so many NPCs, there's so many items, things to interact with, that it just it just puts a lot on the physics processing uh, or the logical processing that your system has to do. And that's all on your CPU. So again, I'm on the fastest gaming CPU in the world. And you can see our GPU usage percentage in the top left dropped from 99% to like the mid 70%, even in the 60s, the 50s at times, because the GPU is not being worked because it's waiting on the CPU to take care of things because this city is so freaking demanding. We're around 100 FPS outside the city to in the 60s FPS inside the city. And it is like a major difference too. It's not just like, oh, we're at 60 FPS. No, no, we're at, we're at 60, 70 FPS and it's like stuttery as all hell. It is not smooth. Uh, hopefully they can fix this in here because it does severely need it because people don't have the fastest gaming CPU in the world. That's what we're going to look at is a CPU that's a little bit slower, still a fast CPU, the Ryzen 5900X. Okay, we're on my other PC right now. You can see in the top right of the corner, I'm recording on Shadowplay right now just so... It doesn't impact as much on the, the frame rate, and I don't have a face cam because of that. We're on the RTX 4080 Super here, which compared to the 4070 Ti Super, it's usually about 15, 20% faster or so in game, but it's a thousand dollar GPU. It's a thousand dollar GPU. And I'm with the Ryzen 5900X. So it's a top tier processor about three, four years ago now. And you can see that even outside the city here, we're at max settings at 1440p without any DLSS right now at all. The CPU is limiting the GPU here to 70 FPS and that makes the game very jaggedy and not smooth. So something that you maybe could do in order to smooth it out a little bit more. I mean, this is really just coping at this point because the game, the CPU should be able to achieve more than 60, 70 FPS in a game, but is actually set your frame rate cap to 60 FPS and it will help smooth out the game a little bit. Um, it'll make it less jaggedy because at least your CPU isn't trying to push it as far as it can. Even though to me, it still looks like it has issues, but 
it helps a little bit. <laughs> it isn't that good. So like even a top tier CPU from just a little bit ago is not even really holding 60 FPS. Let's go and take off the FPS cap and just see how bad it gets inside the city because it's even more CPU demanding in the city. And since we're on a lower end CPU now, you can bet it's only gonna be worse. You see, there isn't even that many NPCs around or anything. We're down to the 60 FPS, but it feels so unbelievably shitty. Like it feels so, so spiky and bad. This is not a bad CPU, guys. And we're down, we're CPU limited at like 50 FPS. Oh my God. Oh my God, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. And this isn't even an unreasonable combo to have like a 4080 Super graphics card and have a, a Ryzen 5900X CPU. Some One of the things that I think that this could be caused by is actually because the game is using Denuvo. It's using that anti-piracy software. How Denuvo works is it actually encrypts the entire game on your system and then the game decrypts as you need it. So your CPU is working to get the data that it needs from the encryption as you're playing the game. So it puts a bunch of extra load on your on your CPU that realistically wouldn't normally be there. What I've seen people do is actually go to Dragon's Dogma 2 inside of Task Manager. You have to go to this list here and then go down here. Dragon's Dogma 2 or DD2. Right click on it and then set priority mode and set it to high or real time. This apparently can help CPU limitations in the game. So right now we're getting about um what 64 fps that's extremely spiky and stuff while looking over in the scene let's go ahead and set the efficient uh the priority let's set it to high change priority let's see if that helps anything how do i um it didn't help there but let's go ahead and save and exit the game and then come back and see if that area is better or worse now we're back in the exact same spot now the npcs might be a little bit different but i'm just saying the set priority thing at least for me didn't make any difference we're still bouncing around 64 to 65 67 fps i mean we didn't really gain anything yeah the cpu performance in this game is absolutely outrageous i know starfield had really bad cpu performance at launch it did get a little bit better i still think it's pretty rough in that game but you don't see me coming back to starfield very much this might be a game that is a lot funner that people actually want to play and i'm not gonna lie like to not be able to achieve 60 fps inside the city on a pretty high-end cpu i mean that's asking a lot guys it really is now let's try our biggest challenge yet let's see how the heck the steam deck is gonna fare with dragon's dogma 2. why can't you turn off hdr wait what i'm gonna briefly interrupt this segment to tell you that I fussed around with this HDR thing on the Steam Deck for a while because I have a Steam Deck OLED. It's capable of HDR in the game because I really wanted to turn off HDR because it makes the game look dark for you guys as I capture it. I could not figure out. I was at it for a very long time and I'm still frustrated about it. I don't know why I couldn't change it, but this game is just it just goes to prove a little bit more that it's in kind of an unfinished state. So you're going to get to see how the Steam Deck, Steam Deck performs anyways, but the gameplay is going to look darker than it normally would. So just to let you know, it is what it is. God. So if you're curious if you could play Dragon's Dogma on the Steam Deck. Well, not right now. Maybe at some point in the future. Uh, updates from Steam and from Capcom will improve things, but this almost seems like a like a, one of those like slideshow like like pixel games from like the '90s, where you just kind of go through like picture options. Upscale sharpen. Oh, let's let's sharpen it. Maybe it'll maybe it'll look good. Oh, guys, it looks so much sharper now. And you can just see that our GPU and our CPU. This could be drawing up to like six watts, but they're only drawing like less than two or around two so this is probably a ram issue or just like or it's just straight up broken like proton would need an update or the game would need an update in order to get this to work but dragon's dogma 2 what did we learn well it is very very hard to run i mean even some of the best gpus at 1440p couldn't really 
max out the game and get 60 fps i mean they kind of got it but if you got in combat then you would definitely not be at 60 fps and more and it's kind of scummy that when you turn on the settings and turn on a preset it actually sets your resolution scale of the game to be lower than it actually is but it's not using like a good upscaling technique to compensate for that no it's just lowering the resolution and acting like you're getting better performance than you really are especially when the game clearly doesn't look nearly as sharp as it should be it's kind of faking it until you make it i, I actually did my testing with the stuff at full resolution scale and uh yeah it kind of showed the truth behind everything and there's other areas of the game where it's just like it's extremely cpu limited so even on like a mid-range gpu and a mid-range cpu maybe that was top of the line a few years back you can't even get 60 fps there and then sometimes outside of the city depending on whatever card or whatever you're, you're using with, with that cpu sometimes you can't even get 60 fps outside of the city usually a, a cpu that's moderately fast and pretty recent and was high end for the time can achieve 60 fps in a game that's not really asking a whole lot i'm guessing that's most of the problems with performance that people are having is because usually people don't upgrade their cpus as often as their graphics card so sometimes your cpu will be behind what your graphics card could be and i'm just assuming that a lot of people are probably way behind because even with me with the fastest gaming cpu in the world it still struggled. The devs behind Dragon's Dogma 2, they said that they're aware of this and that they're working on the CPU, like trying to fix the utilization stuff. And we know they can make it work. We've seen games that are way more efficient with CPU usage than this. I don't think they're doing anything earth shattering with the NPCs and stuff inside the city, especially. I mean, it's new stuff, but it's not like, oh, your CPU can't run it type of new stuff. But it kind of comes down to it. It's like, under all of this like poor optimization and poor performance of the game and the bugginess like even on the rtx 3060 i was playing for the first time i got a crash playing the game oh okay yeah yeah Rise. that's where we go if only so far away. whoa is that a crash pressed all f4 oh god guys oh god bro did it hard crash my computer like a full crash, I had to restart my system. I couldn't get the game to close. Computer, I haven't had a crash since. That's good at least, except on the Steam Deck. It's the Steam Deck though. Uh, I don't even think this game is compatible with the Steam Deck from the performance I was checking. So I don't expect a whole lot from that as of yet, but we'll see how updates go with the Steam Deck over time and see if it becomes performant. But under the surface of all this bad optimization and performance in the game, there is a really fun game underneath it. Oh my god, I just ran her over. We can make it up here. Shall I assist? Never what? Care, I am here. Help us out. Yeah. Oh shit. No. I don't know why we need the boulder. <laughs> just, just ran him over. Shall I leave it to me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh Come on, let's keep it going. Got this, Lillian. Come on. Let it go. Also, this boulder would be like literally thousands of pounds. Like, there's no way. Come on, come on. Somebody help me, somebody help me. That was about to fail. Okay. think of it. The private quarters of one arisen I served had many a visitor. Don't ask why it's so much fun pushing a boulder up a hill, running people over it, and then rolling it back down the hill. I, I don't know. And it's disappointing that you have to have like a high-end system to enjoy the game when really it doesn't need to be this demanding. Like a lot of the time, I mean, there's some moments where graphics are like really, really good. But there's other moments where it's just like, this isn't that impressive. Like the fidelity isn't that insane. So a lot of people just can't enjoy the game even at 60 FPS. <laughs> That's asking a lot to say that your your recommended spec for the game is 30 FPS. That's because that's what you have to have. It, it, they didn't want to admit it in the actual thing, but yeah, that's that CB can only get 30 FPS in the game. For a game that's as good as this is and as hyped as Dra Dragon's Dogma 2 has been over the years, I know so many people are excited for it just for it to launch like this. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Why would you release a game in this state? 
I know that they probably have higher ups telling them to release the game and they need to get the deadline out and all that stuff. But it's like, I know the developers, the people actually working on the game. This is not finished. It's not in a finished state. When they put out a an apology, basically day one, I mean, they know. And people are saying, that, oh, the PC port is bad. It's just as bad on console, guys. Like, it's it does not run well anywhere. The devs have to be aware. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get why we get games out like this that just don't function, especially when they're so hyped and beloved. And this is a $70 game. And they ask for more DLC and shit up front. Like, man, I would expect way more polish. There's tons of polish in other areas of the game. Like, the base game is really good, but the performance... Like the devs had to have known that when, it, when are the publishers going to learn? Because when you do something like this for a game, it taints its reputation. It's like this game that was so hyped and beloved. And then you can just tell that they pumped it out the door. Few games can recover from this. Like Cyberpunk managed to recover from a really rough launch and it never fully recovered either. Like No Man's Sky kind of recovered. Many don't like you got to release a game in a finished state, especially when it costs $70. Like you got to release it in the finished state to make a good impression. Impressions matter a lot. I needed more time in the oven. And everybody who worked on it definitely knew that. They probably got forced to push it out the door, which is just a problem with AAA gaming right now. Those are my thoughts on Dragon's Dogma 2. Let me let me know what you think. If you've tried uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 on your GPU, on your CPU, on your system, let me know how it went in the comments. Um, I'm curious because... It was a pretty messy for me. I didn't get those crazy crashes like that Charlie did or anything like that, but it wasn't good. It wasn't good, especially when you're running actually at native resolution and not getting tricked into thinking you're running at native resolution. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is a sad launch. All right. Peace. Hopefully they can fix it.